All right, uh, hear me? Great. So now that we've uh, passed our uh, slide problems, uh, hi everyone, my name is Ellie Goldberg. I'm the Director of Platform Engineering at Salt Security. A um, bit about me, these are my homegrown animals, uh, Alice the cat and Ma Mango the dog, or as we call them by this office name, Mongo. Salt Security. Uh, so Salt is uh, an um, API security company. We basically protect APIs by looking at uh, our customers' traffic. We build a model of their APIs and we identify potential attackers doing so. We handle billions of daily requests and we uh, love Lingerty and I'm happy to share why. So around two years ago, we were running about 20 microservices on Kubernetes, mostly Scala. Um, and they communicate with each other mostly via HTTP and some other uh, proprietary, proprietary protocols. And as the teams were getting bigger, uh, some of the challenges we've had was to prevent APIs from breaking uh, internally. So we've seen um, programmers introduce new programming languages and it's becoming harder and harder to solve those problems from the code itself. And we started thinking outside the box and uh, we're looking for tools that will make it easier. So just to illustrate the level of complexity, this is what we've had around two years ago. And over time, we started seeing a more complicated pictures, more programming languages, uh, more inputs. And gRPC was a great solution for us because it allowed us to create a single centralized schema um, to actually see our entire APIs, entire APIs in a single repository. Um, it was much easier because you could just call a function and uh, generate a source code library instead of having to recreate your serialization and deserialization uh, JSON requests. Um, and Protobuf is much more efficient, uh, much smaller payloads. The problem is that when you introduce gRPC into your, your stack, you lose one capability, which is load balancing. Um, so unlike HTTP1, gRPC is based on HTTP2, which basically reuses, um, reuses the, the, um, the same connections over a, a different requests. And then you have to figure out another way to keep your load balancing capabilities in Kubernetes. Uh, but there are multiple ways to solve this. Um, there is, of course, client-side load balancing, but since we, were, we wanted to solve it in a language-agnostic way, we prefer to, uh, to solve it in the network level. Um, and since our use case was focused, we wanted to solve the gRPC load balancing issue. Our primary candidate, candidate was Linkerd. Going to staging, um, it took us a few minutes to deploy to our staging uh, cluster, uh, running a few low testing scenarios showed a 250% performance increase just by introducing gRPC and Linkerd. Um, and we thought that we'd let it run for a couple of days before we go full to full production, uh, just you know, to gain some confidence. Production end-to-end -end work was about five days. Um, it was mainly about switching Linkerd to work uh, as a highly available um, solution. And we wanted to deploy it in a more GitOps approach. So we used the Helm charts uh, wrapped around uh, with Terraform. We've set out to solve a simple and single uh, problem that we've had, which is the gRPC load balancing. But we've actually gained so much more. Um, so our connections were now MTLS, encryst, MTLS encrypted end-to-end uh, -end between our pods. Um, we've started seeing a whole network. All the communication between the services was now in front of our eyes. And also it opened the door for us for a few more interesting um, features that Linkerd has to offer that we've already implemented, such as gRPC retries and per team monitoring alerts um, to actually be able to tell teams as a platform team, hey, you have, you have a problem here, go check it out without even knowing about which service or which call they're doing. So if that was the complexity we were talking about, now we're starting to see all the connectivity between the services, which ones were failing, and a fairly easy way of pointing the finger into where a problem uh, persists in the cluster. Aside from production, we've started seeing teams utilize Linkerd for development environments as well, um, to actually verify the correct behavior uh, for the services and their deployments before they reach production, which is pretty cool to see. We're super excited about the upcoming features. Um, so there's circuit breaking that was just released in Linkerd 213. And uh, things like multi-cluster, multi-cloud, uh, Linkerd at the edge, and uh, counter deployments as well. So 
The, the fact is that we're not Linkerd experts, but we're able to do all that means that Linkerd is a super simple but powerful tool, and it has an incredibly welcoming and supportive community, and we're grateful for that. Um, if you have any questions, please, this is my Twitter handle, or find me via email. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, I'm going to ask Ellie to be available.